Today I'm very lucky to be interviewing Linda Crate, author of Blood and Magic. Thank you so much for agreeing to this interview. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? Um, I'm 29 years old, about to turn 30. Um, I have a degree in English literature from Edinburgh University of Pennsylvania, and I've been writing since I was 13. Oh, wow. Long time. Yeah. <laughs> Long time. Yeah. Now, how many books have you written? I have written... At least, let's see, probably about 20. Oh, wow. Including the abandoned one I, I wrote when I was 16. I just, I didn't like it, mm -hmm. and I just trashed it. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think we all do that. Anybody who writes, I've, I've trashed my book um, repeatedly. That's why it's still not published. So <laughs> <laughs> I keep trying, though. <laughs> Uh, now, did you always see yourself as a writer? Probably not until I was um, in my teens. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a mermaid, actually. <laughs> <laughs> not a bad thing. <laughs> I'd like to be a mermaid. I think that'd be pretty cool. Oh, I always admired Ariel. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted that fiery red hair. <laughs> yeah, and all the abilities she had too, except for yes. the you know voice thing. I, you know, I don't think I, I would I would miss my voice. I think <laughs> it's kind of hard to uh, do dance and song to you know tell everybody what you're trying to say. So, do you do this full time or part time? I would love to do this full time, but unfortunately, I can't pay the bills right now, so I have to work as well. Yeah. <laughs> I think most writers would love to be able to do it full time, but writers don't really get paid all that much. Everybody thinks, no. oh, you're, <laughs> you're going to get famous and you're going to make all kinds of money and not so much. <laughs> no, I'm hoping one day I might get lucky. <laughs> right. So talking about your book, Blood and Magic, can you give us some insight into like the main character and the storyline? Sure. Um, it's about a girl named Lucille Roddingale. She is a female slayer for a group that identifies themselves as the council. She um, She's always done her job, but she's never really questioned anything until she starts getting these memories, these little flashbacks, and she can't really remember if they're just a dream or if they're real. Mm -hmm. And as she begins to explore the council and figuring out all the ins and outs, she discovers that she doesn't really like who they are. And the more she pries, the more secrets she finds, she's really, really questioning herself and why she got involved with them in the first place. Hmm. That sounds very interesting. Yep, it's going to be another book on my list. <laughs> <laughs> this may sound like a funny question, but why do you write? Um, it started off as something just like I started off with poetry. It was just something to get my feelings off my chest. But now it's more my life. Like I need to write just like everybody needs to breathe. It's just, mm -hmm. I didn't really choose it in the end. It kind of chose me. I, I hear that a lot from authors that they have to write just to get it out of their head or drive them insane. Yeah. <sighs> My problem is I just have so many ideas. I'm like, how am I going to write these all before I die? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good, though. That means you've got plenty to work with. You'll be putting out yeah. books for a very long time. Do you ever get writer's block? I do. But it's something that doesn't really um, affect me too much. Because once I start to recognize that it's coming, I, I do things that help um, me with my creative process, like listening to music or going for a walk or sometimes even taking a break and watching some anime. Mm -hmm. So now do you set up a special time and place to write? I pretty much write, um, before I go to work or after I go to work. I just, I don't have a set time per se. I just write. <laughs> <laughs> and when you do write, do you do longhand computer typewriter? Um, I used to write by typewriter, but now it's mostly computer and mm -hmm. sometimes sometimes handwritten, but that's mostly just for ideas or character exploration. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that, how much research do you do when you're writing? 
Well, most of my books are, I've worked on so far are sword and sorcery. So I pretty much use my knowledge of medieval and Victorian times. I kind of take the license there since it's a fantasy universe. But I use that knowledge and I combine it with um, sometimes myths or sometimes like things from my own imagination. It's, it's surprising what I can come up with sometimes. I'm just sitting there and this idea will hit me and I'm like, oh, why did I even think of that? And then I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> That'll work into the book somewhere. <laughs> yeah. What was the hardest part about writing this book? The hardest part was knowing really when to end the book because there are seven books in this series. Mm -hmm. So it's like, hmm, where do I end it so I can just pick up and start with the next one? Mm -hmm. And the easiest part in writing this book? Oh, the characters really spoke to me. So I could start once I got started, it was just easy to keep going. Mm -hmm. I, I pretty much had an idea of what I wanted, but I kind of let it flow because I don't like to get too many stringent ideas like this has to happen, this has to happen, because that tends to stifle my creativity. Mm -hmm. Like I have ideas sometimes and they don't work into that book and I'm like, oh, but then, you know, sometimes it works in the sequel. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay. <laughs> okay, that's why I had that idea. It's going to work this way. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you do your own editing? Um, for, the, for the Magic series, I've had to because it was basically, um, I, I'm going through an independent publisher, so she doesn't have time to do all the editing herself. So pretty much I give it a couple edits and then I send it in to her. And, and how did you publish your book, and why did you choose to do it that way? I um, sent it out to a bunch of different publishers, and Ravenswood Publishing is the one that got back to me. So that's why I did it the way I did it. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do to relax? Um, I like to swim. I like to listen to music, watch anime. Um, hang out with friends and family, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, and what authors have inspired you? A lot of authors have inspired <laughs> me, but to name a few, Edgar Allan Poe, Emily Dickinson, J.K. Rowling, C.S. Lewis, Tolkien. All very wonderful authors <laughs> I yes. love all of them Poe is Poe is one of my favorites so yeah <laughs> do Mine's... you have a favorite book <laughs> oh that is such a hard question because I love so many different books but I was very obsessed with Harry Potter when it came out <laughs> mm -hmm. my daughter was the same way she had every book every book and it had to be in hardcover um, because she got the soft covers to read, but the hard covers to keep. So, yeah, I, I do the same thing with Stephen King. So I, she got that treat from me. <laughs> it's just so funny, though, because I usually don't like popular books. Mm -hmm. So as a void reading it, because I'm like, yeah, it's popular. It's probably nothing I'll be interested in. And my best friend was like, no, no, Linda, you have to read this. And I was like, eh, I don't know. But then she got the first book for me for my birthday the one year. And I was like, okay, now I have to read it. Right. And I actually loved it. So and she got you hooked. <laughs> yep. <laughs> now for your own reading, which form do you prefer an actual book or digital? Oh, I prefer an actual book. Digital. I just get too distracted. Yeah. I, I love the feel of a book in my hands and the smell of the paper and stuff like, I don't know, it's just weird. Yeah. <laughs> now, are you working on anything specific right now? I am. I'm not sure if it's going to be a one shot or a series, but I'm working on a story about a moon girl right now whose parents have forgotten her because of a, um, a curse that a wicked witch had put on them. And she has to find a way to get them to remember her. Ooh, oh. that sounds interesting, too. Hmm, another book to add to the list. Um, <laughs> do you have any advice for aspiring writers? Just keep going. I mean, it's really hard sometimes. I got 19 rejections in one day. You know, that was really hard. But you just got to keep pushing through and believe in yourself and believe in your dream more than you believe the criticism. Because you're always going to have somebody who's like, oh, that's stupid or I don't like that. I've gotten a few reviews that made me cry, but it's like you just gotta, you just gotta keep on keeping on. 
And that's great advice, too, because it's not that easy to become a published writer in this world. So you, you have way more critics than you do have people who are going to cheer you on. Yes. Where can our listeners find your books to check them out and purchase them? They're available on Amazon, Barnes & Nobles, um, Kobo, Google Play, Smashwords, it's a bunch of various different sites. But it is online, so you have to publish from the website. Mm-hmm. That's wonderful. Oh, I'm so glad I got a chance to talk with you, Linda. And I want to thank you again for coming on here and letting us get a glimpse into your world. Well, thank you for allowing me this opportunity. I really enjoyed it. Yes, I try to keep it as, you know, comfortable as possible. Just a couple of people chatting. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice. Well, thank you. And everybody stay tuned. There'll be much more coming up. <laughs>